Hello everyone. Today's talk is a very important one to me. And it is titled Messengers of Andromeda. And so I want to poetically begin with a very beautiful abstraction, but then lead on to the ability of man and how that abstraction is within it. The messengers of Andromeda are people who are gaining and getting very great symbolic values. Their symbols are cosmic because they are bringing the whole cosmos into their awareness. When such a symbol comes to you, it is a duty for you to uh, evolve the communication of the symbol and transcend the symbol in a sense, uh, become a greater point of self-awareness. For me, I have established a great devotion to actually uh, our neighboring galaxy. <laughs> and so that, that ideology very playfully resonates with me. Because in the sense, I, I had a dream around 2012 that uh, <laughs> the dream was very abstract. I really can't explain it at all. But all I can say is there was a symbol of an inverted triangle and there was a word that I just knew. And I say this word, pretty much in that dream, I get a sign, I get a symbol, like a geometric shape. And I look at this geometric shape uh, and it feels like an entrance to me at something because behind it feels like a complete emptiness. So in complete emptiness, I suddenly see this shape, right? And this is abstract because I, I know I'm not in my room, but there's self-awareness. self, self -awareness. It's like, you know, that sleep paralysis some people get in the morning? It's like that subtler self-awareness before you have waken up, right? So your mind's woken up, let us say, in quotations, and uh, you, in a sense, uh, are aware before your body is fully alert. So it was simply not a sleep paralysis, nothing was wrong. I was just present, aware that I was in my bed. Suddenly, the knowing of this word which came to me, which is Lida, right? <laughs> this is very personal stuff, I'm sure. This, uh, the word Lida, right? And I just innately say this word, and it has no meaning. I just realize that it's a sound. It's like a mantra, like Om, you know? Like Om Mani Padmaha, you know, Om Namah Shivaya. These are, these are sounds, mantras that are resonant. So I, I just say this, and innately I just say, and I just know the spelling already. It's as if I know the word, it's just I have it, I just say it. And as I do, in an instant I project, and all I just, I don't see anything. But it's just this sudden shift, this sudden, like kind of, I don't want to say explosion, but it's this sudden movement. It's like this subtle movement, and I just see myself coming back. And as I'm coming back, I notice the ceiling all being this cubic kind of like liquid-like thing, you know, separate cubic type of thing. And I just come in, and I just quickly get up, and I just wake up, come to the side of the bed, and I just sit down, and I'm just like putting my hands on my forehead, and I'm just thinking, what happened? And I see that I am so clear. It's as if I took a shower there. It's as if completely there was uh, all the illusion, all the stress was gone. Complete clarity. My father just kind of noticed it. And later on, I told him, and uh, for some long time, I didn't know what that meant, Lita. But after, let's say, a couple years, three to four years, I kind of gained an understanding of that dream. And the reason was it was to be a catalyst for me. So what that means are dream states or something, any new symbol that comes to you, anything that happens to you is catalyzing you. When you recognize this, it's just the significance of the catalyst becomes uh, more significant to the character. Because on some level, it's just an action. It's, there's, it's, there's an emptiness there as well. So anyways, pretty much uh, that the word and the concept became uh, a, a kind of, how would I say it? Before I knew what it was, it was like I was gifted with something. So later on, I, w I got to the understanding that, oh, we are, our self-awareness is capable uh, to be aware of its simultaneous creation in subtler planes of awareness. So when I realized that, I noticed that meditation had a value in telling you how to work with your unknown. And so ancient traditions had understood this very great, uh, greatly, you know, and the Upanishads are, of course, a beautiful reference. Now, as you're being aware of this, you're, you're kind of noticing that that shape, just like any shape, 
is a, a, a certain form, it's a certain view. And so what that means is this, it's a location and it's a vehicle. So when you realize that shapes are vehicle and when you realize mantra and sounds, what really happens is it takes your experience out of your idea and you just dissolve in observing the sound that you are. It's as if there's no idea making the sound anymore. The sound is, it's a natural expression. So similar with Lida, it's a kind of for the pilots of consciousness, it's a lift off uh, uh, method, which I, this is something it's, it's, I'm still developing. Uh, I'm still taking notes, trying to understand it before I give uh, some legitimate content out about it. But anyways, I'm just giving you a preview of uh, an experience that happened to me that really catalyzed me. Because later on, I realized that there was a significance with that, with Andromeda. Because that was symbolically the first thing that had come into my vision and into my knowing. So when you recognize that symbols are not random, when they're just appearing, randomity is for the individual because outside the world is not random, it's just how it is, to recognize it. And so, uh, the depth in your thought is giving you space to understand how your abstraction is abstract. You're recognizing and then you're realizing the same art that you're bringing on the canvas or trying to bring, the same thing that the writer's trying to do is around him. Writer's block uh, comes to a person when they lose self-awareness in the sense that they're so lost in trying to write or having an idea or having a deadline. You must let the creative process happen and the best advice I have for people who have writer's block, think it like this, if you chase the butterfly, you're a step behind, you can't catch it. But if you sit down still by the flowers and just be in that lotus awareness, you will begin to see that the butterfly will come and sit on your shoulder, it will come and sit on your forehead and you will get an awareness beyond uh, your own conception. So you become aware of your intelligence beyond conception, which is a transcendental nature of your being. And all of this, with sound and resonance, it becomes a tool. So on one level, uh, as if and me as an individual, I was like, what the hell, what was this? It was some irrelevant stuff. And because I, I wasn't really that much into Star Wars and whatnot, you know? <laughs> so it was very new for me how the, the image, the, uh, the experience there kind of had a, a suggestion of, a, a, a aspect of my being outside of this reality so from that I began building and I recognize I mean I did not I do I am not rude to symbol so whatever communication that comes to me I, I am aware of it and I let it be because my my nature is one that is allowing existentially so when you have existential allowance even for thought all thoughts are free and so no thought is agitated to be violent you know it's like when you don't put cages all the animals are comfortable because they are natural when you even look at animals, it's not animals, it's just consciousness, it is, it is existence. Sometimes I have looked into beings and I have seen an emptiness that is similar to if I was looking at myself. So imagine, visualize not yourself in a mirror, but if you actually were you're standing, literally in front of you, there was actually you looking and you were looking in each other's eyes and you would see yourself. Do you realize? You would get an understanding that other is the same. So when an awareness comes to self and other, the mystic recognizes it, that it's unknown and known are dissolving into greater abstraction in his mind to then end. What happens at the end of abstraction? What happens when you get the craziest vision? It stops. Because the vision is only relevant to the seer, and the seer is only relevant to that which is aware uh, in an, I don't want to say aware, but it's just keeping that idea there. So what that means is something you would recognize about the shaman, the rishi, the dervish, and all these beings who are aware of these greater states, is that, the, and the yogi, you would see, they would leave their ideology and their whole mechanism of body, their whole moment of being would go in a flow. It would be that moment where that artist suddenly went into a trance. It's as if his guitar strings were so beautifully being hit, so comfortably being allowed, that he was transcending and getting an experience of his own sound creation. Do you realize that? It's as deep as a mountain. And you see that happen. There have been many artists. And back in the day, there were so many, especially in, 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 in Dervish culture, in Sufi culture where the musicians would go in a trance so the whole thing would be an absolute spiritual ceremony. But not a ceremony based on idea. It was actually a ceremony to get out of idea. They would go there and the Sufi path was the Sufi path of love. It was a path of love beyond ideology because the whole point of the whirling dervish was that he was looking at his ego and he was spinning. It. It's as if he was spinning with all existence and dissolving his ideology. And in that vastness, he is all that he is. 
And of course, this is mine. This is Mr. Within's interpretation. But uh, the understanding of existential love means to be the silence that is that understanding. In sometimes being empty in our observance, we realize we can see everything. And it is always a vague construction if you think you are a thinker. Because you are not sure if you are a thinker. So if you are not sure on a shaky idea which you, you think is you, then psychology is based on the ability of man to uh, uh, slip when he doesn't need to. Psychology should be a natural realization of life experience. A gentle one, a compassionate one, and a graceful one, and one that is efficient. That means like there is no patient, there is no client in therapy. There, it's just a being and you need to activate them by making them realize that vision is their responsibility. That they should never even get to the point of thinking that they are depressed because they are the one who, are, who is responsible for all vision. It's like that person trying to get a job. You are responsible for the work that you do in that job, which you're routinely doing. You're also responsible for maintaining the ideas that serve you and are efficient for you. If you're constantly going through depression, you're shaking the identity which is here to serve you in, in social dynamics and in, in many different cultural communications just in society. The messengers of Andromeda can be playfully said to be that peak of awareness, experiential awareness that one gets where you see that you are not, it's as if your newest sense of experience is the edge of one galaxy for the first time connecting. So as if you are the newest messenger of a galactic connection found present. And so very poetically, you are inspired by the value of the reality that is real for you. So you look at your life and you look at everything and you're like, okay, these visions are real for me and so these will become the objects of my meditation. And as you meditate on your truths, they dissolve into greater understanding. They have to. Because that is simply the nature of attention. That is the nature of a man being in a room. If you're in the room too much, you'll eventually look at the room and you're like, wait a minute, the door is right there. You know? And before you thought it was just a room without a door. So it's very important. There's this very interesting story I want to share ancient traditional story and it's about these two frogs that fall into a well where they can't jump out of and all the other frogs gather around the well and they're like you can't do it and they're they're very 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 angry frogs let's say you know you know there's not just angry birds there's angry frogs so let's say these angry frogs are there and they're saying you can't get out you can't and now you see out of these two frogs something unique happens as the people cheer in, in anger and hate and they're like you can't do it you're gonna die oh don't try you know you will see that one of the frogs eventually after trying so much of trying to get out stops and just goes in a corner and just dies just fades out of depression loses hope. You see the other frog is just continuously going and it's just weird because all these people are saying you can't do it, you can't do it and it's like it's inspiring this other frog, right? And this other frog gets so inspired that suddenly a boost of inspiration comes and he jumps out of the well. And people are like, how the, this, this guy, this guy is so profound, you know? And they went and saw the whole thing was that that other frog who got out of the well was deaf. That frog couldn't hear, so he looked at the audience and he thought the other frogs were cheering him on. So he, in his mind, he was like, oh, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Do you realize this? So the profundity of that story is that perception is suggesting the outcome of where you're going to. Be aware of this. It's very important. The mind is your area of study. Study your mind, study the relationship, and choose how much you want to be. You can have a ratio of experience. You can have an aspect of yourself that is more relating to an experience where it's a body that has a mind, and simultaneously you can have another greater awareness to that you are a collective being, you are a collective consciousness, that you are the mind and the body is within you. You recognize this? The body is basking in the mind, intelligence of the mind. And the intelligence of the mind is basking beyond consciousness, similar to how we have three states, uh, a solid, liquid, and gas. And so as it dissolves to gas, as it evaporates to gas, you begin to see that the nature of man's consciousness is dissolving into a collective spiraling of just being. So you begin representing great cosmic symbols. And so you will see that that triangle and that word were simply resonances to give you projection and perspective perception in your subtler planes. And that is why symbology is a gift. If you go, sit, if you go 
do the Om Mantra and you go in nature and you go in your solitude and you authentically just hear that mantra, you begin to see that it will dissolve the nature of your cognition. In the sound that when I, when I say this mantra and I really go get into it, as I'm doing it, I, I just go, it's not out of body experience, but it's just like you're beginning to know yourself as reality, as everything. In other words, you're not just seeing a, a difference anymore, you're also seeing the integration that was always there and it was part of your knowing, part of that intuition. And so such a clarity is profound because it finds itself in infinite ways. It is transcendental in nature. And when there's a transcendental aspect of your intelligence, it doesn't matter what you name it, it doesn't help you. The ability of man needs to be capable of working with that aspect of experience. And we can do this. Mr. Within knows we can do this because we have to. <laughs> and uh, of course, these are all being said very gracefully and playfully. And I'm just simply saying that the messengers of Andromeda is my way of saying that galaxies are speaking to one another and even the prayers of galaxies is being answered. We are greater in our vision and the moment we can handle our abstraction, we realize we always had a simultaneous presence. When you realize the simultaneous presence, it's like the reason you had a cause and effect and you were aware of both of them is because you were instantly aware of them. All cause and effect is observed in an instant of your knowing. That is where certainty is stemming out of. So we need to be aware of the roots of understanding and the roots of understanding are within you and so that is the profoundity that you begin to see you can't ask too many questions. You just need to go find what's within you and you need to have a sincere relationship with life. One that is so sincere and honest. Literally you're not being an honest man for the people around you and for your society and to be just a good person. You're not trying to be polite and all that. You're trying to discover the nature of self. You're trying to discover the nature and the origin of your experience and awareness. There are cataclysms, there, ca there are in intense catalysts in man's experience. And as we become aware of this, we represent the cosmos every moment. And the newest ideas I have is that Mr. Within is saying that he is the existential presence of the greatest connection that man can perceive, which is the connection of galaxies. The fact that the intelligence is within, just like how we are in a body. Uh, one form of galactic understanding is within the next. I would like to, you know, for the sake of it, because it's, there's only one lifetime. <laughs> I'm going to do the Lida mantra. And first I'm going to begin with Om, and then I'm going to go with Lida. And I'm going to simply go into an authentic state, just a very natural state, <laughs> and to show that where that word goes. Mm. 
As one becomes aware of presence, you are the positioner of all experience. Your experience is here. And as the pilot of consciousness recognizes that he is the awareness of his whole plane of existence in existential intelligence and self-awareness, Utilize the Lee sound to, in a sense, prepare all ideology and concept and bring it all to a vortex of chaos and order where all your spectrums and every image you know and everything you're aware of is just dissolving and just being into this one uh, orb of just uh, uh, view. And as you are observing this, as you say da, you are a projection into a new sense of understanding. So from Li, we are going from the infinity and the reality we're here to a sense of zero and reaching a complete, empty, clear understanding where all idea is, is there and we are aware of it. And as we say da, we are moving and moving to that transcendental ability to fill up our experiences and fill up those symbols, for example. Uh, uh, the word and the concept of Andromeda in the way that it is communicated you, and you would you would begin to see that it would fill up that experience with knowing just like how the Zen master's teacup in its emptiness is filled so as we take these symbols to their peak as our awareness and knowing that is beyond symbology as we are the awareness we are the observer which is beyond time and space we begin to see then uh, the value of that co-creation with the symbol and the idea and the resonance that it all took us to a different state of consciousness and a different state of being. I hope as you perhaps may listen to this talk again one more time, you listen to it with very, with a deep listening where you're not trying to care for what I'm saying but you're trying to care for what you're hearing and how you're hearing and as you hear the nature of your experience. As you listen to this, the mantras at the end will uh, give you a clarity. I did the ohms first because uh, uh, you will establish yourself in your trust and then from that very deep profound trust of that sound, you may then experience the uh, uh, Lida, <laughs> I guess, uh, dream mantra that I received. <laughs> and I hope this serves in many ways. This is uh, one lifetime. We're only here a hundred years. Uh, be aware of how other people are living. Be aware of how you're living and take yourself to the experiences that serve you. And sometimes when I say serve you, serve your understanding. You want to increase this un your understanding in this life every day. When I first began, I wrote a quote for myself and I wrote, I do not want to live in a world that looks the same the next day. As in that every day we need to enhance our awareness and our awareness of what truth means in this reality and plane. And as we do, we are observing our plane of conception and our plane of existence and we're becoming aware of our intelligence which is aware in a very omniscient manner to the subtler planes. So what that means is because man is an individual reference point, this reference point can give him a spectrum in which he can relate. And as he relates, he begins to be at first the creator of his dimension unless he trusts the space in which he He's moving very transparently through and transcendentally through in which then he allows from a sense of uh, emptiness to then suddenly go back to infinity.
you when you go to emptiness then from that emptiness you can literally be anything so pretty much it's the understanding that in an awareness of no thing you're nothing and as you are nothing you're aware of everything do you get it the spectrum of experience is one that is covered in imagery that doesn't need to suggest the difference and separation. When you see that there never was an individual to the point uh, that one could think as if like your individuality is just how much you choose to accept an idea. But beyond idea, uh, uh, that in, in your silence, beyond uh, ideology and names, you begin to see that if you didn't have a name and you lived in this life, you would be a totally different observer of your life, of this life. It's as if in silence and stillness we begin to see that names uh, were just noise and movement that was always observed from stillness. I hope this talk has served you. Don't take anything anyone says too seriously, but if it's useful for you and it serves you, utilize that awareness and knowledge. Uh, be a very compassionate being, and in compassion, there is a great expansion in awareness that occurs. It is the most efficient consciousness technology, self-reflection that is instant. Health begins with healthy vision. And that's when your life is meaningful, not just in its physicality, but all that the physicality implies. For the omniscient of the observer is always untouched. <sighs> Much blessings and namaste.